Hello everyone, and guess who's back with a brand new rap? Oh wait, no rap, a science video. Well, according to my comments, it's a good decision that I decided to make this three weeks later, because apparently the Fundagon was enough science for three weeks. And quite a few of you wanted me to do the baby gun, so I thought, hey, this would be really interesting to explain, wouldn't it? And so let's get right into the news! The first question we have to ask ourselves is, the baby gun even possible? Well, from the research I have done, no, well, not without breaking most of the basic physics rules. But wait, I know, you know the answer is not possible, but that doesn't mean I'll just give up. Let's start by looking at what the gun actually does. Well, we can obviously see that it shrinks the zombies to about one-fifth of their size. In reality, the zombies will just compress into a pile of goop. But that doesn't really happen in the game. So, let's get into science lesson number one. So, let's go. So you know how, like, everything you know is made out of atoms, with a few exceptions, of course. Most of what's inside the atom is empty space. Well, technically, it is a field of quantum fluctuations, but that's for another video. There is such a huge distance between the nucleus of the atom and the electrons orbiting the atom. So large, in fact, that if you imagine the atom being a stadium, the nucleus would be the football in the middle of the stadium, whereas the electrons would be the outer edge of the stadium. Just imagine all of that empty space within every single atom. So, why doesn't your hand go through everything you touch? Science, that's why. When you touch something, you're actually not touching it. In fact, you've never touched anything in your life. How sad does that sound? It is just the electrons on your hand interacting with the electrons of whatever you're trying to touch. So this is the part where it is all just theory and science fiction. If any of you guys are familiar with the Marvel character Ant-Man, you will know that he has the ability to shrink and grow by a factor much greater than that shown by the baby gun, or shrink ray or whatever you wanna call it. Marvel explains this through the use of pin particles. A group of subatomic particles that increase or decrease the distance between any other particle, be it atomic or subatomic. This sounds crazy, but believe it or not, the theoretical basis is absolutely plausible. So now we have somewhat of an idea of how the baby gun shrinks and enlarges zombies. When we apply it to COD, there is one tiny hiccup that we get. You know how the pin particles decrease the distance, not the amount of atoms? This leads to the zombies being the same weight, but just being tiny and much much more denser. Just imagine 23 baby-sized adults clawing at your feet. So this next part is going to be fun because there's going to be maths and physics in it. So one of the most popular ways of using this gun is shrinking the zombies and kicking them to finish them off. <laughs> you might already see what I'm trying to hint. So the zombies get flung various distances compared to if you run, walk or crouch walk. But I'm going to be working with the distance that they get flung when Takeo is running because that is the maximum potential of the player. And it's time to use projectile motion. I have decided to use me kicking this horde as reference to my calculations. And the way you deal with projectile motion is that you have to split up the motion into two parts. Vertical motion and horizontal motion. This is a bit different from the usual projectile motion question because here we have to find out the velocity instead of being given it. I have to calculate the two speeds, vertical and horizontal, separately to get the actual velocity. So let's begin with vertical, which is easy. Let's imagine that they don't hit the pillar behind them. The trajectory would look something like this. Well, luckily for us, the pillar appears to be in the middle of the whole trajectory, which is the maximum height that the zombies will achieve, which I've shown using H in this diagram. H is an unknown in this situation. Luckily though, we know gravity and we know the time taken to reach the point of H. Which, by the way, I figured out by looking at this recording. Well, in normal speed at least. So it's about 0.86 seconds to reach the point of H in the parabola, and gravity is minus 9.81, because in this situation it's working in the negative. So if we use the equation V equals U plus AT, we get a value for the vertical velocity of 8.43 meters a second, which means that the pillow will be about 3.6 meters in height. Okay, so now we're done with the vertical, we have to figure out the horizontal. Unluckily, gravity does not affect the horizontal motion, and we cannot use V equals U plus AT, so we have to approach it in a... kind of different way. Which was using no clip to estimate the distance between the pillar and that stone I kicked all the zombies at, and then multiplying it by 2, which I estimate is about 25 meters, which I represent using the letter D in this diagram. So if we divide 25 by twice the previous value of time that we got previously, 
because it's the whole parabola, we get a speed of 14.5 meters a second horizontally. This next part is slightly easier and you might be familiar with it if you watched my previous video, but we have to use Pythagoras' theorem to find out the actual velocity, not the vertical and the horizontal separately that is, which gives us 16.77 meters a second. 16.77 is the initial speed that the zombies are kicked at, so we must times that by 60 because that's the weight to figure out the change of momentum, which gives us 1006 newtons. Now, if you know that when you kick something, your foot is in contact with it for a certain amount of time, and I'm just gonna estimate that the, the Chaos foot is in contact with the zombies for about 0.1 seconds. If you imagine the zombies as a football for a second, it seems like a reasonable amount of time for your foot to be in contact with the ball. So I'm gonna divide the change in momentum by the change in time to get the force, which gives us 10,060 newtons, which is the force for only one zombie. So we have to times that number by 23, which is the maximum number of zombies per horde on this map, and we get an insane force exerted by Takeo's feet at 231,380 newtons, which puts his feet at almost half the power of the Thunder Gun. Damn Takeo, never skip leg day, I guess. I'm guessing Takeo just wants to disrespect your surroundings! Well, I hope that was eye-opening for you, because I found it kind of interesting that Takeo has really strong V. Luckily, Takeo didn't have the same side effects as the Thunder Gun, so I think the world would be okay in this situation. Besides that, I want to thank you for actually watching this video this far. Also, I would really appreciate it if you guys share this video around with other people that might find it interesting, because, you know, nobody else really makes si videos about the science of the Wonder Weapons. Don't forget to leave a comment on which Wonder Weapon you'd like me to cover, so I will have something to cover. <laughs> Besides that, rate, comment and subscribe and the usual nonsense. But also, enjoy the rest of your day.